All right, what we want to do here is start a review over linear regression. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at an example here where we're trying to determine if there is a relationship between um, the IQ of somebody and their GPA. So again, we're trying to determine can your IQ predict your GPA. So again, x, um, the x variable becomes the uh, IQ. So that's the predictor, and then we're trying to predict the GPA, so that's why. So we're trying to use your IQ to predict your GPA. That makes um, IQ the explanatory variable, the explanatory variable. Easy way to remember that that's the X variable, and GPA is going to be the response variable. And what we want to do basically here is we want to analyze um, a connection between these two variables. So we want to see if we can take a look at a scatter plot of this. So one way we typically do this is best to use our calculator here. So with our calculator, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit stat, go to edit, and we're going to enter in list one would be our IQ, list two would be the GPI. Double check, you type everything in right, you don't want to type something in wrong and um, kind of mess everything up. Once you've typed that in, you could take a look at the scatter plot by going to second stat plot or second y equals, making sure your plot one is turned on, making sure that it's uh, a scatter plot right here, and then make sure you've got the correct x list, L1, that's the IQ, correct y list, that's L2. Make sure that you have anything in y equals cleared out so it doesn't come up. And you want to do a zoom 9, which is your zoom stat. And we notice the scatter plot. And that scatter plot does look fairly linear. I don't see any kind of big curve in it. It does show a linear relationship. We also um, could take a look at the residual plot. But we're going to take a look at the residual plot towards the end here, and we talk a little bit more about that. The first thing I'm interested to know is creating a line. Remember, um, the line of regression is our uh, formula is y hat or y predicted equals b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x. And this formula is given to you on the AP Stats formula sheet. Please remember that b sub 0 is the y intercept, b sub 1 is the slope. And all of these things do have formulas that we can calculate by hand. Um, B1, the slope, is R, your coefficient, coefficient or your um, correlation coefficient, times the standard deviation of Y divided by the standard deviation of X. So that makes sense that, that the relationship is for every one standard deviation of y, X, the um, Y increases by R standard deviation. So every time we move up one standard deviation of X, we move up R standard deviations of Y. And remember that R is always less than one, never be greater than one. So that's why that we call it a regression line because it's always regressing behind the X values. And the B sub zero is our Y intercept. The Y intercept formula is your Y average minus your slope that you just calculated times your x average. And I'm just going to show you really quick here, uh, or I can't really show you, but if you do take a look at your AP uh, formula sheet, these two formulas, actually all three of these formulas are on there. So, um, and I have them right here, I'll quickly show you. If you do vaguely remember, here it is right here. Um, I print this off for you. Um, right here I'm pointing at is the slope formula for the uh, y-intercept. Down here is the formula for the slope. Up here, right here, is the formula for the regression line. And then here is a more complicated formula to calculating the slope that you do not need. And here is a complicated formula for calculating the coefficient correlation, R. But again, you do not need that as well. Our calculator will do all that for us. So um, let me quickly show you here exactly how we're going to do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our averages for the both lists and we need to get our standard deviations. So if we do a stat, um, slide over to calc, we want to calculate the one variable stats of list one. And this is going to be for the IQ and we noticed that we had an average IQ of 104 I believe and the standard deviation of this list let me pull up, I hit the wrong thing here, there we go. The standard deviation was 13.4990. So a 13.4990, 13.4990, okay? And then we also need the average for the GPA and the standard deviation for the GPA. This is the standard deviation for the X. And to do that, once again, we're gonna go to our calculator we're going to pull up a stat calc. 
one variable stats for list two. That was where we had the GPA stored. And that gives us 3.02 with a standard deviation of 0.4211. So 3.02, standard deviation of 42.11. So 3.02.4211. And the last thing we need is the R value. Now, to calculate the R value, we're actually going to have, interesting enough, we're going to let the calculator do all the work for us. So we're going to go stat. Calc, we're looking for a linear regression, and do not choose number four here. Number four is AX plus B. We do A plus BX. That's just the order that we like. We like to do the Y intercept, which they call A. We're calling it B0 um, plus B times X. So hit on that, and we got to tell it do list one first. That's the X list, comma, list two. That's the Y list. And it's going to actually calculate everything for us. A is your Y intercept. B is your slope. And there's your R squared and your R values. So I'm going to write those in real quick. The R value is 0.9122. The R value again is 0.9128, excuse me. The R squared value is 0.8332. So let's write those down in here as well. The R value is 0.9128. And interesting enough, everything that we're about to calculate by hand was just calculated for us by the calculator anyway. But I still want to show you guys real quick how to calculate this by hand. Once again, so the slope is going to be the 0.9128 times the standard deviation of Y, 0.4211, divided by the standard deviation of X, which is 13 point four. 990. So let me do it on the calculator real quick. 0.9128 times 0.4211 divided by 13.4990. And you get a slope of, let me pull this slope up, 0 0.0285. And if you remember taking a look at what the compute calculator just gave you, if you follow along with me, it's the exact same value. And for the y-intercept, we've got to take the y-average, 3.02. So it is important as you're doing this to not get the y's and x's mixed up, or you will get the problem wrong. And the slope that we just found was 0 0.0285 times the x-average of 104. I'm going to use this on my calculator as well, 3.02 minus 0 0.0285 times 104, and this gives us a y-intercept of 0.056. So our final equation, putting a little bit of uh, context to it, is the predicted GPA, GPA hat, equals 0.056 plus 0.0285 times the IQR. Now, if we take a look at the calculator real quick one more time, all of this was on the calculator. There's the 0 0.058, a little bit off. Again, were we rounded? They didn't. And there's our slope, 0 0.0285. Again, a little, maybe a tad bit off, but that's only because we round and they don't. Now, let's interpret here. Remember, how do you interpret a y-intercept? Y-intercepts are always what happens when x is 0. So when you have an IQ of 0, your GPA would be 0.056. Is that meaningful? Probably not. Um, I guess the numbers make sense, but honestly, could you ever have an IQ of zero? I don't think anybody does, to be honest with you. So um, that it wouldn't make sense in that aspect. Also, having a GPA of 0 0.056, technically somebody could have that GPA, but again, with an IQ of zero, really wouldn't make sense. The y-intercept, or I'm sorry, the slope does have a meaningful context. The slope, if I put it over top of one, remember the bottom is your x value, the top is your y value. So this tells me that for every one point that my IQ goes up, my GPA predicted will go up 0 0.0285 points. So for every one point of the X, G, IQ, the Y or the GPA will go up by 0 0.0285. And I guess that, that definitely has meaningful context and it usually does. Um, also, let's quickly review what R squared is. If you remember R squared, again, the calculator gave it to us, or we could just take that R value and squared if we forgot, is 0.8332. That means that the R squared, which is known as the coefficient of determination, is 83.32%. That tells me that 83.32% of the variation in GPA is explained by the variation in IQR. So the differences that we're seeing in all these GPAs, 83% of those differences is actually due to the differences that we're seeing in the IQRs. 
Um, so that's some real quick interpretations. So what we could do here if we really wanted to, let's say you calculate or you do a test online or something, you find out you have an IQ of 116. You can actually use this to calculate your GPA. So you can do 0.056 plus 0 0.0285 times 116 if that's your IQR. And if your, I, if your IQ, excuse me, was predicted to be, or not, I'm sorry, if you actually know your IQ is 116, your GPA predicted would be uh, 3.362. And again, all I did was plugged in 116. Also, uh, something else that you can do, but I want to talk to you about it, but realize that you can't do it, is sometimes somebody say, oh, I have a GPA. Let me try to work this backwards and predict my IQR, or my IQ. Sorry, I keep saying IQR, IQ. And you actually cannot do that. This formula is generated and it was built to do one thing only. Take IQRs that are known and predict GPA. It cannot work backwards. You cannot plug in a GPA and then subtract the, um, the uh, intercept and divide by the slope and calculate your IQR. It cannot do that. If you really wanted to do that, you would have to flip the X and Y, recalculate all these formulas. Again, this is change, flip over, right? The uh, standard deviations right here. Reverse who your Y average, your X average is because you're flipping everything. And that would be a little bit harder process than just plugging it in. You cannot do that. So that is a quick little summary there on how to use the calculator. The last thing I want to talk about real quick here is talking about how to find a residual. Remember, a residual is how far off each value is. So a residual is an actual point minus its predicted. Okay? And the easy way to remember that is A comes first in the alphabet, so it's always actual minus predicted. Okay? For example, um, let's just say, let's go back to the example of I have an IQ of 116. Okay, and at the same time, I know my GPA is a 4.0. I'm a real smart student. I know I got a 4.0 GPA. So my actual GPA is 4.0 minus the predicted that we just got above a 3.362. So actual 4.0 minus 3.362. This is going to generate what my residual would be. 4.0 minus 3.362 would give me a residual of 0.638. And that's a positive residual, which means that um, my actual was higher than predicted. I was actually higher than predicted. That's a positive residual. Because if here's my regression line, a positive residual would be right here. The residual is this difference between the actual point and the line, the predicted line. And a positive residual means that you actually were higher than predicted. Negative residual would be something like this, where your actual value would be lower than predicted. So make sure you understand that as well. And again, residuals are only for Y values. You don't want to use IQR, or I'm sorry, IQ. Again, you want to use IQ, you'd actually be dealing with GPAs here. So that's how you'd calculate residuals. So if we want to take a look at all the residuals. Remember, a calculator, once you run this linear regression, like I just did, that's on the screen right here, your residuals are automatically calculated. And if you want to take a look at them, hit second stat. At the bottom of this list is a list called resids. If you want to take a look at the res residual plot, you would go ahead and change the Y list. You want to leave the IQs alone. Change the Y list to that residual. So again, second stat. And you would slide up to the residual there and select residual. And then you got to redo this and hit zoom 9 again. And you see that that's a great residual plot. And um, notice that there is... Uh, no pattern in that residual plot at all. It's all scattered. That's exactly what you want to see in a residual plot. That shows you that your linear line is actually a pretty good line. So we have R squared, pretty strong, 83.32%. A good high R value, 0.9128. It's a very strong R value. Scatter plot looks straight. Residual plot looks scattered. That's a great linear regression line that we just calculated.